It's Tessa with Hip Over 50, coming to you from sunny England. Woohoo! So, I am going to talk to you today about UK US dual citizenship, something that I am very privileged to have, and perhaps my experiences and my you know, background might help you a little bit in seeing how it may work for you if you're eligible. So I'm Tessa with Hip Over 50. I moved to England in midlife, and this is all about my experiences. I'm kind of starting from scratch here, and I hope my experiences and my journey can help you see what life may be like here for you too. So are U.S. citizens allowed to have dual citizenship? Absolutely. Are U.K. citizens allowed to have dual citizenship? Absolutely. So there you go. There is no special club. Either country will allow you to hold citizenship in another country. Um, so if you're already British, you can apply for citizenship in another country at any time. And there's no separate application um, on either side of the pond. You just are a dual citizen, uh, a holder of dual passports. So let's start off with what does it mean to be a British citizen? Well, if you're born in the UK, you are considered a British citizen. Even if you weren't born in the UK, you may still apply for UK residency through your birth parents, which is something my son did, who was born in the US. Um, you also could be eligible for citizenship by obtaining something called the right to remain. I know there's a lot of different terms, but basically it means that's primarily what citizens have is the right to remain uh, free without any constraints on their time here and that is what you want, right, if you're a citizen. So you're free to enter, leave, live, work, do whatever you want while you're here. And, you know, it's not that difficult to apply, but I know it's challenging for a lot of people. There is no easy way into citizenship here if you don't have um, either by birthright or perhaps study or work visas. They are making it a little sticky, even though immigration is at an all-time high right now. So just keep the faith if you're trying that out. Um, U.S. citizens, like I said, can also hold dual citizenship, and that's not a problem at all. Um, you'll still be entitled to U.S. citizenship even if you become a naturalized citizen or even if you are a naturalized citizen of another country are employed in another country or vote in a foreign election. So you still can retain your U.S. citizenship. Um, so what does it mean to be a U.S. citizen? Well, if you're born in the U.S., you're automatically an American citizen. Unless, weird thing, you're a child of a foreign diplomat. You may not be eligible. Um, if You may also be entitled to U.S. citizenship through lawful immigration, which is what I did. I moved from Canada into the U.S. when I was a teenager, and I had to apply for citizenship. Um, you know, when you, just so you know, when you do enter the U.S., you should always use your U.S. passport if you hold one, um, even if you're a dual national. Um, and, you know, U.S. citizenship is for life. <laughs> it's unlike many things. Once you're a U.S. citizen, that's it. So you would have to renounce it if you no longer wanted to abide by the laws of being a U.S. citizen. So what are some of the benefits of U.S.-U.K. dual citizenship? Well, of course, there's that ease of travel between both borders without any time limits or restrictions. You can come and go as you please. Uh, the door is always open, as they say. Um, if you're obviously, as a UK resident, you're eligible for free health care through the NHS. Hello, I did another video on that, and I think it's awesome, as well as free prescriptions if you just happen to be over 60. Um, on the US side, depending on your age or employer, you're also eligible for some free-ish health care through Medicare or Medicaid or through a paid plan in the US. Um, you have the right to retain your pensions in either country, and you have the right to work without needing a work permit or a visa, as well as the right, of course, to study without the need of a visa. Um, you can rent or buy a home or other assets in either country. I've talked before about the fact that you can buy a home here in the UK without being a citizen. Um, you can even obtain a mortgage. Um, not at preferential rates, but it is possible to obtain a mortgage here. However, you cannot rent a full-time property. In other words, you can't sign a 12-month lease agreement if you're not a UK citizen. 
Um, the other advantage is you can vote in either country. So you can make your voice heard in either country. The advantages. What are some of the disadvantages of holding dual citizenship with the U.S. and the U.K.? Well, here's the biggie. U.S. citizens are required to pay U.S. taxes for life, regardless of where they live. Hmm. And you may be required to pay U.S. taxes on both your U.S. and your U.K. income. Now, I know there's some, I'm not a tax attorney, I don't provide legal advice, but that is something for you to consider if you're thinking about dual nationality. Um, of course, you'll be required to uphold laws in both countries, but you were going to do that anyway, right? Um, U.S., strangely enough, U.K. citizens aren't entitled to diplomatic help from the U.K. Embassy while they're in the U.S. That seems a bit tit for tat, but there you go. Um, and there is no reciprocity between the two countries for driving licenses. As I said in another video, that was, <laughs> that was a trial by fire for me. I mean, goodness gracious. Um, once you live in the UK for 12 months, you are required to get a full UK driving license if you want to continue to drive. You don't even, you know, even if you don't have a car, if you want to rent a car, um, of course, you know, there's a little bit of an out clause there. If you have a full U.S. driving license, you can still rent a car, but they will want to see your trip home to the U.S. So legally, you are required to get a full U.K. driving license, and that means starting from scratch. Now, you could drive in the U.S. on your U.K. driving license. Um, some states may require you to get an international driving permit. And after, if you decide, you know, you're going to stay for a long period of time in a particular state, you might want to get their driving license as well, just to make things a little easier. But you can drive on your UK driving license. There are no restrictions there. Um, and you should be prepared to build a separate credit rating in both countries. Um, that's something that's a little, you know, a bit of a throwback, but... I had a great credit rating in the U.S., but it doesn't transfer over here. So it kind of, once you've been living here for two years, the clock starts ticking and they start, you know, counting up your credit, what you've been doing in your credit history. But until then, it's kind of hard to really get credit. Um, but I have done. It hasn't been a problem for me. Um, so just be in, you know, be aware of that. That might be something that you want to consider as well. So... I have written a great blog post on my hipover50.com site that gives you all of this information and includes all of the links that I can't give you here in the video. Um, so I hope that information was helpful if you're considering becoming a U.S. or U.K. citizen or having dual citizenship. Um, that those are some of the things you should be aware of. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Put any comments or questions below and I'll try to answer them. And I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.